Here we are a little more than 150 years before our era, to the south, the territories of Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, survival doesn't look promising, and yet the Hohokans, meaning those who've disappeared, are going to develop an original civilization. Yeah. I'm beginning to wonder if there'll be much corn this time. You're right, there was more last year, I remember, and it was full of... Hey, take a look over here. Look at this one. It's good. Lots of kernels. Why? I'm pretty sure I know. Well, why? Look here. There, there's water because there's a depression. There, there's no water. It all runs down the slope. And so we ought to plant seeds in furrows. But there aren't many... No, there aren't, but we can make some. <laughs> And that was how they discovered irrigation. Planting on the plateaus is done in terracing. That was a lot of work, oh. but now a little well-deserved rest. I think they must have bees in me. I, I'm a beekeeper myself. Not that kind of bees. They got bees in their bonnets. We've prepared many terraces. Now when it rains, the water won't just run down the slope. We'll plant our seeds there. Not a bad idea, not bad at all, but I have to admit, I had already thought of it, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Come on, quick, it's the day we're playing ball. <laughs> quick, come on, come on, ball game, the big game. Well, first we ought to go over the rules. Now, you listen. Uh, you wait for the signal, and I'll remind you the ball is projected by the foot. And besides, there are rules. Well, there aren't really. Just do what you can! to blow off steam a bit, it's the rule. Anyway, it doesn't harm anybody now, does it? It's the rules of the game. That is the rules when there aren't any rules. As I've always said about rules, you, uh, well, you need a few of them all the same. Rain, it's beginning to rain. It's raining, so what did it rain? We're playing, we're playing, so let's play. It's raining, raining. Quick, come on, we'll see. A half of an important game with a team like ours, just because it begins to rain a bunch of chickens, Mom. No, it was really a great game. as we thought they were, right? But, boss, you... I know, shut up and dig. And irrigation was to bring them harvests that were sure and abundant. Years passed, centuries even. To the north of the Hohokans, at Four Corners, that is, the spot where New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and Utah all meet, the Anasazi lived. The name means old people. They were to become the ancestors of the Hopi Indians. As dominators of a vast territory, they will leave tangible evidence of their civilization. They lived in villages, pueblos. Mesa Verde was built at the base of a sheer vertical rock face in an ancient cavern. Now, was it a fortress? We don't know. In any case, these must be the most inaccessible dwellings ever built. How did they do it? How did hundreds of people ever get home with their, their heavy loads? How did women carrying babies or food manage to scale this cliff and several times a day? 
And yet it appears they did a mystery. Because even now, only experienced mountain climbers can make the descent to Mesa Verde, and they need ropes. Of all the pueblos of this time and place, the one that is most remarkable has to be Pueblo Bonito, east of New Mexico. Bring me some water. If you're thirsty, you can come and get it. <laughs> hey, Gazelle, want to really help a thirsty worker? The fountain is for everyone. Drink all you want. Uh, thank you, thanks. Oh, boy, it's going to be the end of us if she offers him a drink. It means... She's willing to become his wife. <laughs> Greetings. Hey there, friend. Do you have a pair of sandals for me? See, mine are falling apart. Ah, uh, well, maybe. Too small. Your feet aren't normal. I'm big, so I got big feet. Isn't that normal? I have to make them return tonight. Hey, it's time to raise the beams. The walls are at the right height. They're crazy. They'll never accomplish it. And what's the point of slaving away under the blazing sun? What's the good of it all, huh? Three stories, but for them it won't do madness. Are we all ready? Then let's go. Easy, nice and easy. Sure, he'll fall, boss. Sure. Why didn't he tell me why? He never failed. Tell me why. Tell me why. There we are. The kiva is finished. We might meet here for public gatherings and all sorts of meetings. Over here would be our granary for storing grain. I'm sure we'll have a big harvest this year. Well, it could be even better. If we knew precisely at what time the four seasons began and ended, then we... Yes, but we don't know. No. When there are buds, that's the springtime. When the sun's hottest, it must be summertime. And in the autumn, we always harvest the corn. But in winter, well, it's cold. Yes, of course, but tell me why. Hmm. Well, because the sun warms us much less. Yes, why is that? I don't know. Man, take a look. It's noon now. Look at the shadow. It's short in summer, but in winter it grows much longer and reaches here. Now, look over here. The winter sun is lower in the sky like evening when it's cool. In summer, it's high the way it is at midday. It's very hot in the summer. It's the noontime of the year, and winter is the evening of the year. Logical, hmm? Tell me. Everybody understand? Uh, right. Very logical. At least I think it's logical. Then we'll build a house for the sun, and everybody can come and see when the seasons are changing. Now, come. Yeah, up there at the top. That's where we'll be closer to the noonday sun. That's it, that's splendid, splendid. Now we have to place the stones so that the rays of the sun shine through the vents. Now watch, the rays will shine through. Make marks according to where they fall. There we are, today is the shortest day. 
So mark that. Yeah, we must draw the sun between the two lines. Eh? Good. Now the first day of spring. Now the day will be as long as the night, exactly, neither shorter nor longer. How pretty it is. Look, it's shining there. There, the tiny point. Why do you want to climb all the way up there? We will find down in the shade. Shut up. I want to be sure the whole bunch is really crazy. They go up here all the time, and they bring back precisely absolutely nothing. So why do they do it, huh? What's it got to do with us, Chief? Come on, let's get back into the shade. Shut up and climb. <laughs> yeah, it's precisely noon, and it happens to be the longest day of the year, summer's first day. There we are. Well, now we can see be quite sure when the seasons come. <laughs> now I know what I wanted to find out. You do, boss? So, what do you know? They really are crazy. Uh, but, boss, I thought you knew that. I did, but they're dangerous. They're dangerous madmen. It's because we did our planting at the right time, and now we can do it every year using our solar calendar. They're fine. You can send a message to the market. There'll be plenty. I'm on my way. Oh. I remember how to send it. Four signals means big harvest, corn's ready to ship. That was good work. They got the message. How'd you like that, boss? They harvested a big crop. Yeah, and us? Have you seen ours? <laughs> This is fair. Yeah, look, our corn cobs are emaciated. Maybe they're not so crazy after all with their little furrows full of water and their stones for knowing the seasons. Uh, listen, boss, I got a big idea. Oh, 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 oh. Who is it? Who's there? Burglars! Burglars! They're stealing our squares! Hey, boss, they spotted us. What can we do? Get out of here. They're stealing our cars! Stop this! Watch it! Careful! Here, bring up a ladder, quick. Women and children. You have a look over in the building there. Go on. You better go and bring out Maestro. He wouldn't make it. Catastrophe burned down real quick. No, don't be sad. We're pretty lucky. Everybody got out in time. We'll have to reconstruct it. That's just what we'll do. Good. Everybody has to work. We must carry the bags of corn to the market. Me? I don't carry anything. Now, don't count on me, huh? I see. Well, come over here. So you both refuse to work, and why? And you see, I got lots of pains here, pains there. I, if I try to lift anything, I, my back hurts, and, and I, I don't walk my legs are jelly. I have a remedy I'm sure will cure you. This, this, and water. Now, you drink it down in one gulp. One gulp. Yes, gulp it down. 
It's an old remedy my grandfather taught me. It's good for anything that ails you. It always works. I put in, well, a bit of... It's a big secret, a magic potion. Yeah, but there's one little point that I'm not too sure about, a minor detail. Oh, what's that? The dose, I'm pretty sure. It's really three bowls, one after another. That's enough for me. I think I know I'm better already. I really cured it. Are you quite sure? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at this. Now, you, your problem is still sick. Me sick? No, I'm fine. Never felt better in my life. <laughs> no, I'm hunky-dory. Splendid. <laughs> but remember, if you don't feel well, you come and see me for medicine. Oh, no, thanks a lot. It's okay. We're in the pink. Everything's fine. Good. Then pick up the sack and take <laughs> it to the market. <laughs> Decades passed, but slowly the climate changed. What a miserable harvest. Almost nothing. There won't be any, all dried up. Everywhere the same. We receive messages and they all say the same thing. Look, harvest bad. What is it, Maestro? What's happening? Why is it so bad? Perhaps the gods have abandoned us. I don't know. Our friends are up there to build a temple on the plateau. Maybe it'll help. It's our only hope. Have to bring a lot more stones. <laughs> Oh, yes, just before the year 1200, we see the unfortunate fate of the Anasazi. There has never been such a drought, and the greatest monument of this thousand-year-old civilization will remain unfinished. Oh, my Esther, we can't go on. Half of our men have died of hunger. Or complete exhaustion. We've no more water. We can't finish the temple now. Let the gods come and help. For many years, springs come late and the autumn has become cold as winter and all the buds freeze in blossom and the sun is no longer a friend. We, we, we must leave this place and scatter to the four winds. We're ready to go, but where do we go? All of you, come, come quick here! He was a model for us, a man to show us the way, a true friend. He will stay and lie his final rest in this village he loved so much. And so the Anasazi dispersed, leaving behind the magnificent edifices they had constructed. Some would go to the north, where they were to become the ancestors of the Hopi Indians. Others go to Arizona and meet the Mogollon Indians, who give them an unwelcome reception. These foreigners, why can't they stay home, not come here, eat our bread? And still others will walk toward the southeast, as far as the Rio Grande. As for our friends, they go to the east, the Mississippi. There they will discover one of the most remarkable cultures in all of ancient America, the civilizations of Mississippi. They attain their high point around 1200. Mexican influence is seen clearly here in the crops that they grow, sweet corn, red kidney beans, squash and in the pottery and in the sculpture, with the figures often based on the famous Mexican plumed serpent. But it is in these monuments that the influence is most to be seen. Mounds like these. Well, you can find 10,000 of them in the Ohio Valley alone. Ah, now we find ourselves near the Mississippi, and there are more mounds as big as the others, to the east of the spot where the city of St. Louis will one day be built, Cahokia, an area about 500 acres, a population over 20,000. Surely one of the largest cities of pre-Columbian America, that is, before Columbus. These monuments, or tumulus, well, there are at least 20 inside the city limits and a countless number of them outside. The Great Pyramid is equal to or exceeds the greatest monuments on Earth in their size.
Time passes, seasons one after another, and years go by. Our tumulus is now almost finished. Beautiful ceremonies will be held here, but it's only a small monument. No, the other one, the one of the monkey, covers seven hectare at its base, and its platform is over 30 meters high, and it took 600,000 cubic meters of trodden earth to construct it. But how many men carrying sacks of earth were needed to build it? 20 million? 25 million? Nobody knows. Now, here comes a wise and venerated man. Wait, haven't I already seen that face? Greetings, Chief. We've come to plead for justice now. Not quite ready yet. No, one second. I'm ready now. To, uh, it seems to be wrong. Eh? I'm you want to that that I think so. Oh, oh, you will tell me your problems one at a time. Now, what is your case? Go on. Ah, uh, mighty chief, this man here has planted his corn, his beans, and his gourds in a field that belongs to us. I mean, me. And you tell me your story. Well, it belongs to our family. I remember that it's been ours a long time, and that pest wants to steal the fruit of our labor. And you? Tell me your story. No, me? I agree with him, of course. No, that field has been ours for a long time. I worked there when I was this big. Yes, yes, I see. Well, I'll have a closer look. <whistles> yeah, taxi, I'm in a hurry. It's our village, our fields, our houses. There's the marker. It's been there many, many years. And there'll be another marker over there at the water. Fields on the left belong to us. The ones on the right are their property. the marker's been moved a bit. Not at all. This half's our property. They're trying to grab our fields. That's what's happening. Come and see. They've moved the markers. This one, you see it. It used to be there, I swear it. And the other one there. And look over there on the other marker. It proves it belongs to us. The design on the marker is ours. <laughs> <laughs> always fight. They have all they need for a happy life. Oh, well, mankind will never change. This field belongs to you and your kin. As for you, you tried to rob him. Now, you deserve harsh punishment, but for once I'll be lenient. You and all your men will work until you replace twice what you have destroyed. May the sentence be done. In three centuries, with the coming of Europeans, this magnificent civilization would disappear. The heirs of the pioneers who had come from Asia and hunted buffalo had a choice of how to die from European gifts, fatal germs or firearms. In a very short time, these people were turned into a dying race. They were neither savages nor saints, these pre-Columbian Indians. They were human beings with the faults and virtues that all of us have. That can continue.